All right, so in this video, I will be showing you the benefits of using good lighting to capture eye-catching photos and videos. Now, I am a firm believer of utilizing what you have first until you start making money to afford the upgrade of all the tools needed to better your content. So with that being said, let's start this video off with lighting because lighting is key, okay? Adding artificial lighting to your workspace is highly recommended because it allows you to have access to better lighting and not have to depend on natural sunlight 24-7. Think about it. Sometimes we will tend to finish with our last client at night and guess what? There's no sunlight, okay? We can't use uh, natural sunlight. So that's when we have to depend on the artificial lighting. And I say it is mandatory to have if you work in a space with limited to no natural sunlight access. So for starters, I want to share with you my favorite starter lighting kit. Now you may be aware of this brand, but if not, here's what I use. It's called Newer Lighting Kit, and it can be found on Amazon for about under $100. And I honestly believe it is well worth every penny because I have been using this kit for over three years now. But I'm telling you, this kit right here is the truth, okay? Now, I hope at this point you have access to a ring light. But if not, then here is a few good options to choose from. I use this one on the left. Um, the other two, I do know some people that uses these lighting systems. And, I mean, these lighting kits, my apologies. And they absolutely love them. So I say start off with either one of these three, okay? Honestly, I use my artificial lighting every time. I don't depend on natural sunlight to take my pictures because I like to capture the same lighting tone for all my content because I am not the best with editing software. So to help me keep my editing to a minimum, I have a setup for my lighting that works for me 99% of the time. Here is a visual of how I set up my lighting for taking pictures and videos. Okay, so this is just the standard three-point lighting um, setup. I do my best to make sure I have even lighting around my subject before taking a photo or video. I also painted my salon walls pure white so the light can bounce off of the wall and make things in my studio salon appear more brighter. And of course, you know, sometimes you have to play around with the lighting here and there, but I do have two tricks that can improve your picture and video quality. Lighting tip number one. Sometimes you have to play around with the ring light to capture the best lighting. So say you have the ring light facing directly on your subject and the lighting seemed too bright. Just turn the ring light so now the lighting is right in front of the subject instead of directly on the subject. And for lighting tip number two, I want you to try this. Turn off all the lights in your space and close the curtains. Then turn on just the ring light and watch how amazing your pictures and videos is gonna turn out. All right, y'all, so it is dark in here. It is still light outside, um, but I closed the curtains. So I'm gonna show you that you can take pictures with all the lights off and just your ring light. This is the ring light. I am about to turn it on. That's the only light that I'm gonna turn on. Okay. Yes, Hi. Now put your head down, baby. Not all the way. Huh. Yeah, like that. Huh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So y'all see that it still brightened up the room. So that's a little trick. Thank you, baby. And I'm gonna also take a picture so y'all can see. All right, you gonna say bye? Bye. <laughs> Now, I never use tip number two on my clients just yet, but for my personal videos, I do it from, you know, time to time, and it works. So I really want you to try it. Now, here I wanted to show you an example of good lighting versus bad lighting so you can get the idea of what you should be posting versus what you shouldn't be posting. So here on the left, you see it's really good lighting. My background is not distracting. Okay, I know we're talking about lighting, but again, my background is not distracting. And you can actually see her hair. Versus on the right, it's really, really dark and you cannot see her hair. And again, the goal is to attract your dream clients. So you must 
get very good and clear quality photos and or videos of your client's hairstyle. Now this next lighting is optional. It's called a soft box and I use it as additional lighting to add balance in my salon space when needed. I sometimes turn off my ring light and just use my soft box. Like it's, it's a really good um, alternative. I use my soft box more when taking photos of myself depending on the area of my house because my walls inside my house are like a cream color and without lighting my pictures come out horrible, okay? Alrighty, so now that we have went over lighting tips and tricks, let's dive into taking better photos. As I stated before, I am a firm believer of utilizing what you have at the moment to your best advantage. However, once you start making money, then upgrade, but do so accordingly. Don't stress yourself out by trying to buy everything in this program today or even this week. Make your money, set goals, and budget. Take your time and purchase items that is within your budget and will best benefit your needs for your vision. All the suggestions within this program is what I researched would be best for me and the results I was going for. However, I do highly recommend that you invest in an iPhone or a DSLR camera because these devices capture better quality photos and or videos. Alrighty, so now let's dive into taking better photos. So for starters, I want you to take a photo of something. I don't care what type of phone you have. So here, I want you to take a photo of a subject, but do not use any filters. Just snap and save this picture to your camera roll. Now that you have took the photo, I have a question. Did you clean off your camera lens before you snapped this picture? Hmm. If not, then clean off your camera lens and retake the picture of the exact same thing that you just took a picture of. And again, without any filters. Once taken, say photo to camera roll and we will come back to this photo. Now that you have took a couple of pictures, let's now go in and change your camera settings on your phone if you haven't done this already. Now me personally, I have an iPhone, so I will show you through a video on how to change your uh, camera settings. And if you are an Android user, I will have to walk you through the process step by step in writing. But for now, I am about to show my iPhone users how to switch your settings so you can start capturing better pictures and videos. All right, my iPhone users, so let's adjust the settings on your camera so every time you take a picture and video, you get the best results. And I am going to let you just watch this short little video, but I want you to um, get your phone out and start switching the settings along with the way I am showing you in this video. Now that we have changed your camera settings, you can skip the next um, portion of this video because this is for the Android users, okay? All right, so for my Android users, let's adjust the settings on your camera so every time you take a picture or video, you get the best results. So here, I just want you to read the instructions uh, and follow them. So take out your phone and follow along uh, with these instructions. All right, so now that you have adjusted your camera settings and learned more about lighting, I want you to find some lighting, either artificial or it can be natural sunlight, wipe off your camera lens, and then retake the exact same photo of the thing that you took a photo of before we started adjusting your camera settings. Can you see the difference? Like, I'm pretty sure you can see the difference, okay? So from the lighting to just making these few adjustments of your camera settings and wiping off your camera lens before snapping your pictures or taking your videos make a 
big difference in the quality of your photos. So now that we got all of that taken care of, now let's get into creating content based off identifying the right angles because the angles really does matter. Taking photos and videos at a certain angle can make or break your content. So make sure when you are creating content, you are displaying your work in the best way possible. Don't get me wrong. You want to show your clients a beautiful face here and there, but we have a goal of building clientele, right? So the goal is to showcase your braided styles. So make sure your main focus is on that aspect first. Then think about how to capture a few photos of her beautiful face and her beautiful smile. And when creating content, take multiple angles. As you see here, it's, it's a few angles and I have tons of more angles. But for the sake of this video, I just wanted to throw three of them up there, okay? So try out a few different angles. You can even step on a footstool if needed. Just make sure you're getting multiple angles, okay? So you can get above angles, you can get side angles. Of course, you wanna get back angles, okay? And this is basically a good angle versus a bad angle. So as you can see on the left, it's a really good angle. Uh, like her head is positioned perfectly, almost in the center of the picture. You can see the stitch details. Her posture is good. Versus the picture on the right, her head is filling up the entire frame, making her head look larger than what it actually is. Her body looks smaller than what it is. And the lighting is so dark that it makes her braids look bad. So make sure you get good with capturing the right angles and figuring out what lighting setup works best for you so you can set an even tone throughout your entire Instagram feed. Now, look at these two pictures, okay? The good versus bad posture. Her posture on the left is really good, um, okay, compared to her posture on the right where she's leaning against the chair, making things look a little awkward. So again, do not be afraid to adjust your client, or not adjust, but fix your client the way you want her to pose, him or her, okay? All right, so here are a couple of quick tips to keep in mind so when creating content, it can run more smoothly for you. When setting your prices, remember to add 15 additional minutes to each service so you can use that extra time to create content. And while you are doing your client's hair, start figuring out what angles you will use when taking your pictures and videos so once you are done, the process goes by faster. And remember, content is king, so never be afraid to ask your clients permission to take their photos and videos. Like I have been saying that repeatedly, do not be afraid, all right? Because the worst that can happen is for them to say what? No, but nine times out of 10, they are going to say yes, especially if you slate their hair. Now, you also got to keep in mind that everyone does not make the cut to be featured on your Instagram page. So if your client is not up to par that day, but your style is fire, still create the content. Just showcase more of the side view, back view, and above views of the styles rather than the front view of the style. I know this may sound a little messed up, but in due time, you will see, you will start to see where I'm coming from. But anyway, now that all that's covered, I want you to always ask yourself this before posting your content. If another stylist posted your content as their own, would that stylist content grab your attention and make you stop scrolling? If the answer is no, then don't post it. I don't care if your posting time is approaching. If the post does not add value, do not post it. Find another picture or video that will capture the eyes of your potential and your current clients because at the end of the day, we are on Instagram to attract and add value to our potential and current clients. So let's start creating winning content and I will talk to you in the next video.